is it that is so special about Alaska? Well, I suppose she's the the only surviving sort of Victorian gentleman's yacht because that's what she was built as as a, a private boat, hence the sort of flamboyant uh, design and sort of no expense spared in the construction because passenger vessels were built much more simply, much more sort of utilitarian, and uh, it was just uh, through fate that she never actually was used by her uh, owner. I don't know if he ran out of money or what, we haven't uncovered that part of the story, although doubtless we will over time, but uh, she was used by the builders as a passenger boat, presumably to pay off the bills, and then uh, after a few years she was sold on to a passenger boat company up in Oxford, and she spent uh, up until the Second World War uh, running backwards and forwards between Oxford and Kingston uh, on as a public service, so um, th there's nothing else on a par with it, surviving. There are, there are three other passenger boats, um, 1901, 1905 and 1896, but they are, you know, they were purpose-built as passenger boats, so they are much more sort of uh, industrial in the so, yeah, you know, nice boats nonetheless, but this has that certain something about it. So, so when you're, you're sat at the helm there, and you're gliding down the River Thames on a beautiful sunny day, I mean, what do you think about it? <laughs> Uh, it's a very good question. I'm, I'm normally worrying about other river users, to be honest, and uh, <laughs> whether the champagne's cold enough for the guests, things like that. It's uh, fairly mundane, but uh, now once all the passengers have gone, if we're steaming back to base empty, uh, you're just enjoying the wildlife and the scenery. It doesn't matter how many times you've got the same stretch of river, it's never the same uh, you know, on, on two occasions, and uh, you see a lot of wildlife, big steam powered, and, uh, pretty quiet, so uh, you creep up on uh, the wildlife. Uh, oh, it's just yeah, it's very pleasant, relaxing. Then you get in the car at the end of the day, and it's all gone within a few yards of the road after you've been cut up by someone. Or... Well, when we took our trip down the Thames, there was a lot of magnificent houses down there. There was one house that stood out amongst all of them. Can you just tell me about that one? Oh yes, that, that's one of my favourites. It's completely clad in small logs. It's a bit of a sort of Hansel and Gretel house, I suppose, and uh, its garden is. Um, about a three-acre uh, three island uh, connected to the house by a bridge and always kept immaculate and uh, we've actually did a job for the owner a few years ago where they had a big marquee and a couple of hundred guests on the island and we took the guests out for trips um, and I believe it was a house that was owned by the actress Wendy Craig at one point. Do, do you think the, uh, the owners of these houses find it a bit, uh, do they, think they, they find it amusing that all your your tourists are snapping away at their houses day, day, day in, day out. Uh, I don't know if they're amused. I, I think they quite like um, being associated with the boat. I, if I wave at them or blow the whistle, they'll come and wave, and a lot of them know my name. So maybe they get some vicarious uh, pleasure from that. But uh, whether lots of people pointing at their house and taking photos um, is a pleasure, I, I, I somewhat doubt. And it always makes me laugh, a uh, lot of the modern houses built on the river that are all glass. And the curtains are drawn all the time, just for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> so they spend all that money to draw the curtains all day yep. long. Yeah, it's terrible. So Peter, tell me, how, how did you acquire this beautiful boat? Ah, uh, quite by accident really. I mean, uh, I got a job as skipper on it in 1995, uh, and that was purely accidental, really. I, I was just after, you know, keeping my hand in, as it were. And uh, A for Alaska was first in the yellow pages, and they just happened to be wanting a skipper at that time. And so uh, I've, I've been skipper since then, and uh, saw one change of ownership. And then when the second owner uh, decided to sell, I thought, well, I, I won't get another opportunity, probably, put in a silly offer, and. Uh, you know, it was accepted, and uh, suddenly he uh, became a owner and operator of the the boat, which is nerve-wracking. But there again, it could uh, it enabled me to uh, put into practice things I'd always thought should be done, or um, you know, keep going things that have been done in the past. But you know, I, I had ideas about what I wanted to do or wouldn't have given the chance, so uh, I was able to uh, put that into practice. So it was a bit of fate, was it really? Oh, absolutely, yes. yes. Uh, that was in uh, 2005. And had you ever had anything to do with a boat this size before, or this age before? 
Uh, not quite this age, um, and probably not as small as this. I was at sea as a deck officer for many years, so a lot, a lot of large um, and a lot of steam vessels, but nothing uh, quite like this. But uh, I, don't, I always had a bit of a passion for sort of paddle steamers and old uh, river boats and things. So if I was going to end up with a boat, uh, it probably would have been something very much like this. <laughs> well, I mean, you must have the best boat on the, on the River Thames. It's certainly the prettiest, I think. Yes, there are a few other old ones, but this is the, the oldest passenger boat. It's, um, I think, bar one, probably the oldest boat on the Thames, full stop. And uh, it's in the National Historic Fleet, and uh, we've carried the Queen twice. So, I mean, it's, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's got a certain status to it. And are you glad you bought her now? On days like this, when the sun's shining, and we just finished a, ni a nice charter job, and... Uh, Yes, I mean in the winter when you're crawling around in the bilges and pulling propeller shafts out for the MCA inspector and uh, anti-fouling, those sort of things, then not, not quite as pleasant. <laughs> Yeah, well, she's 60 feet long, 9 feet 6 beam. Uh, she draws 3 foot 2 at the skeg and only about 6 inches at the back. Uh, built for speed, very long and narrow. She'll do 14 knots uh, without too much problem, although you, you'd be surfing behind her at that speed. But up to about 8 knots, she doesn't make any wash at all. Um, when she was doing the Oxford to Kingston service, uh, she'd have been doing about 10 knots all the time to keep the schedule on that. And at that sort of speed, uh, she likes it because uh, you know, the, the boiler and engine designed for that sort of operation. When you're plodding around at five miles an hour as you are on the river you know, to keep within the speed limit, but, um, it's not really working that efficiently. <laughs> there's something special about the engine, isn't there? Uh, well, the engine is the original engine, although when it was put back in the boat when it was restored um, in the late 70s, early 80s, um, they weren't sure what engine it was, it just happened to be what looked like a very good match for the boat. But uh, subsequently, uh, over the years, we've uh, found various people and been able to trace uh, where it went. And it uh, seems, uh, after she went out of service with the company up in Oxford, uh, she ended up in London in the war. And uh, she, had, she was used as a guard boat, uh, presumably by the Home Guard or some other sort of organisation. And, uh, she also did some trips uh, from Richmond to Teddington Lock and back, and, uh, and when she was taken out of service, um, Putney Sea Scouts acquired her and took the engine out, and that ended up uh, as a sludge pump in Kingston Power Station. Um, we didn't realise that had happened until relatively recently. Um, we just knew that the engine that had been put in there had been found at Kingston, uh, but uh, yes, it had been uh, purloined by the people in the uh, power station to use as a, a pump, and uh, that's probably why it survived. And when the power station was decommissioned, uh, I think it was just dumped back on the quayside, and uh, someone acquired it and uh, eventually made its way back to the boat. Yeah. Uh, so, did you ever pinch yourself and think, "My God, I've really got this boat," or, or did that happen years ago? Uh, no, I, I think it still happens. Um, you know, you, you sort of take it for, a gr for granted um, on occasions, and during the season you get very busy, so you're concentrating on all the uh, sort of minutiae of actually you know, running a commercial venture. But uh, then when you've got the nice uh, sort of chance to sit back and enjoy it, you, you, yes, you, you definitely have to pinch yourself. Yeah. <laughs>